I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and Jacquard just released eight new acid dye colors, including a fluorescent blue acid dye, which you should know is a color I have been dreaming about for years. Today's video is sponsored by Jacquard Products, and I'm going to take you through the eight new acid dye colors, and then we're going to dive deep into that fluorescent blue acid dye, black light blue, including my very first reaction to seeing it under a black light and then speckling with it. We're going to have a lot of fun. And then we're going to play with a full fluorescent rainbow. I think that these eight new colors really supplement the 40 existing colors in the Jacquard Acid Dye Collection. The new colors are magenta, fluorescent red, fluorescent orange, fluorescent yellow, crocodile green, aquatropic, black light blue, and vivid violet. And out of these eight colors, Four of them are fluorescent under a black light. Three of them have fluorescent in the name, but then black light blue is also fluorescent. Some of my favorites of these new colors are magenta. This is perfect for color mixing and is a awesome, beautiful, deep pink color that really was missing from the line. Vivid Violet is a beautiful, bright purple. You know how much I love purples, and so bring us more purple acid dyes. Crocodile Green is a beautiful deep green that isn't too blue. It doesn't really lean teal, but it also isn't too bright, and I think is super unique and a color I know I'm going to lean on a lot. There are two fluorescent colors that are really, really unique and that I've never played with something quite like them before. One is fluorescent red, which is so much fun. I love combining it with the fluorescent orange and aquatropic. I think that that combination is really awesome. But then, of course, there is black light blue. And as someone who loves dyeing rainbows and fluorescent rainbows, having a blue dye that is fluorescent is a really big deal. And so now, if you take the four new fluorescent dyes and then add chartreuse and hot fuchsia to the mix, you can make a completely fluorescent rainbow. And another thing I think that is pretty cool is that the fluorescent acid dyes are going to have a new black label. So that way uh, you know that it is a fluorescent dye. And I think that's just pretty cool. I'm going to share my first look and first impressions of these eight new colors in another video. And part of that is because when I was filming my very first impressions, uh, the dyes didn't all have the same names that they do now. And so I wanted to be able in this video to share both these awesome colors, but also to specifically dive into black, light, blue and talk about how it works and all of the things that I've learned from talking to Jacquard about this really unique and special dye. When Jacquard Products first reached out to me, they asked me if I thought that there was anything missing from their collection or if there's anything that I was dreaming of. And this is part of what I emailed them. I said, my dream color is a fluorescent blue, but I don't think this one is very likely. Turquoise is wonderful for neon colorways, but I've never seen a true fluorescent blue acid dye. And the response back was that I was about to be very, very excited. And excited I am. I am so excited to now go through my first experiences with black light blue. When my package arrived from Jacquard, I pulled out the fluorescent blue acid dye and needed to dive into it straight away. And I'm going to be sharing some of that footage here right now. While filming this footage, I did a lot of speculation and wondering about how this color works. And well, I now know more about that. And so I wanted to share things in a clear way so you know what to expect when you get this really unique and awesome color. The first thing that you'll notice when you open up your jar is that the dye powder doesn't look very blue. It is sort of a taupey beige color. And then when you dissolve the dye, it doesn't look very pigmented. Here I am dissolving one gram of dye in some hot tap water. And that is because the blue isn't very pigmented. The blue color in black light blue is a pastel. Black light blue is a special blend of acid dyes. It has a little bit of blue acid dye pigment, and then it has this colorless fluorescent acid dye. And this blend of the two colors is what gives us a fluorescent blue. 
Unfortunately, there isn't an actual dye molecule that both presents as blue and is fluorescent. That doesn't exist. But this blend gives us that effect. The blend looks light blue under white light, under natural light. But then when you turn on a black light, it's gonna glow and it's super, super cool. This is an acid dye blend and so it behaves very similarly to any other acid dyes that you might use. And it will fully exhaust uh, from the dye bath. And from my conversations with Jacquard, it does appear that it exhausts at a similar rate to the blue dye. So even though you can't see the colorless pigment, uh, it is exhausting. This 1% dye bath cleared after about 12 minutes, but I did heat for 30 minutes before removing the yarn. I did notice that the dye bath was a bit cloudy when I removed the yarn, and in hindsight, I probably should have checked this with a black light, but I didn't know at the time how this color worked and that it was a blend of a colorless pigment with a blue pigment. So next time I do a kettle dyeing with this color, I'll have to check that out. <laughs> Black like blue is wash fast. Uh, similar to other acid dyes, you do want to wash the yarn with cold water because hot water can disrupt the interactions between acid dyes and the yarn. The light fastness of black light blue is similar to other fluorescent acid dye colors. It isn't the highest rating for light fastness, but it is within the range of what you can expect from commercial acid dyes, and specifically the fluorescent dyes that are a little bit less light fast overall. And so here's the yarn that I dyed at a 0.5 and 1% depth of shade, which is a half gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn and then one gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And I remember that I was really, really nervous to try the 1% depth of shade because a lot of fluorescent colors at a 1% DOS might bleed a lot. And so you don't need that much dye usually to have that bright neon feel. But as you can see, the blue here isn't that bright. It is a more pale blue at a 1% depth of shade. And so I'm definitely gonna need to push this further uh, once I get more of the dye. And so we'll try, you know, maybe going to a 4%. I don't know if we'll try pushing it even higher. Apparently it is about the ratio of the blue pigment to the colorless acid dye pigment. And so it should still be fluorescent if you use more dye. I tried so hard, so hard to not look at this uh, right away. I wanted to look at this in the jar with a black light. I wanted to look at this in the dye pot with a black light. But I really waited until I could block out as much of the ambient light as possible. But now let's go look at what I know you've been waiting for. My first very echoey look, because I'm in my closet, at black light blue under a black light. I have not cheated and I'm not even sure if the yarn is 100% dry yet, but I wanted to give you my first impression. So let's turn off the lights. Oh man, I am nervous. Just your exposure. That is glowing. <laughs> I think. Let me go find an undyed yeast skein. Okay, we need some things that don't glow. So I have a skein of yarn with not dyed with non-fluorescent colors that was featured in another video, and a skein of some bear yarn. And we're gonna do this again. Turn off the light. Turn on the black light, and oh my goodness, we have a fluorescent blue. <laughs> I am so happy. See, I wanted to make sure, and you can see on this bear skein over here, where it's reflecting a little bit of the blue of the black light, but this yarn, it's so bright. Oh my goodness. The color feels like a really, really soft blue. I need to go find some other fluorescent yarn. I'll be right back. Okay, next to it we have a very neon rainbow yarn set. <laughs> okay, so the blue is not nearly as bright as the yellow, but it is bright, especially when we compare it to the blues that we have over there. Uh, those blues uh, aren't fluorescent at all. And so we do have a beautiful pop here. 
Maybe the blue is a little more on par with the pink. Uh, the color in this yarn is less saturated, but okay, we're gonna get out of the closet now. I think the blue will pop more when the color is more pigmented. But I now wanna see if I turn off the lights in this room and, and turn on the same black light, you see the glow, but you can kind of see it here. Even with all the lights on, the glow, just shining the black light on. The fluorescence that we're seeing and being able to see that fluorescence is about the ratio of the fluorescent acid dye to the blue acid dye. If you have too much of the blue dye in there, that pigment will absorb the light and so you'll see less fluorescence. So there is a balance in there. And so I have an example that I think can help illustrate this a little bit by comparing black light blue to hot fuchsia, which was an existing color, and vivid violet, one of the new colors. Here we have two new colors, vivid violet and black light blue, and then we also have hot fuchsia. Vivid violet is a very bright purple, and it does, I think, have some of that hot fuchsia pigment in there, because in some other projects, using it at a lower depth of shade, I did see fluorescence there. And I expect right now, because we see our purple does have breaking, if I bring over the black light, we do see some glow in that vivid violet. However, it is not as much as, say, the hot fuchsia or even our black light blue. The blue pigments, I think, in this vivid violet that make it more saturated obscure some of the brightness that you can get. And so if I had more even coverage over there, that little bit of pink glow we see would be a lot less. And here's that same close up next to the pink and you can just see how much more that pink is glowing. And even though that pigment is in the violet, it is a lot more obscured. And my hypothesis just based on the way light absorption and things work is that if we add in more pigment to that black light blue, and oh my gosh, it's glowing so much right here. But if we had more pigment in there, uh, more blue, it would obscure that glow that we're seeing. And so then we would get less of it under the black light. If you wanna see a brighter blue, you can add some True Turquoise or Brilliant Blue to Black Light Blue, and it, you'll still have fluorescence. It's just the amount that you'll be able to see might uh, be reduced depending on how much blue dye you add. The blue in Black Light Blue does start to feel brighter when it is more pigmented. When it's more concentrated, it does start to lean into that neon blue category. So what will it look like with speckles? I pre-soaked a skein of sock yarn, uh, superwash merino nylon blend in some water with vinegar, put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and went to go try to speckle some yarn with black light blue. We're gonna spread out our yarn a fair amount because I wanna do some chunky black light blue speckles. I'm gonna make sure my fingers are completely dry. I'm gonna grab some powder and speckle on. Ooh, this is fun. I'm curious how much of the like black light reactive stuff will get um, like outside of where the blue is. But yeah, I'm just speckling and I'm realizing I should have had a yarn mop ready to go. Eventually I'm going to use all of the neon colors. I'll zoom you in in a moment. I just wiped my fingers onto a yarn mop and you can see how bright the blue is when the dye is more concentrated. And then the speckles themselves do have punch, they are vibrant. But you might find yourself needing to use a little bit more of the powder to get something equivalent to what you might with the other dyes. So <laughs> be forewarned that for some of the other pigments, less is more. <laughs> so we'll see. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh, oh, you can see. Oh my gosh, the speckles go more than where the blue is. Oh, that is so cool! Okay, like, in here is a region with almost no blue. But look at those black light 
speckles. But that is awesome. Oh my gosh. And that's with overhead light as well. Imagine if we went into my closet and then turned on the black light. Oh my gosh. Because with the black light up high, it's less vibrant. As I move it down, then you can really, really see. But then, of course, the blue on our yarn mop still does glow. I will say that as the blue is a little more concentrated, you feel more of the glow around the outside than maybe in that center. And so at some point I will push the saturation of this dye so we can see the point where we no longer see it glow. I flipped the yarn over and applied dye to the other side. I wonder if we'll see some of these black light speckles in the areas that look more white under natural light once the yarn is dry. But this was super, super cool <laughs> to see. And so black, white, blue might be pastel when you're using it as a tonal, but with a direct dye application, it is a very bright neon blue. It's just not a very pigmented color. So there's not a lot of pigment there uh, compared to some of those other neon fluorescent colors. I steam set the yarn for 30 minutes in a steamer basket and then washed the yarn off camera. And even when it's dry, if I bring that black light back in, we've got a beautiful, beautiful glow. Uh, so the speckles that we have on the areas that appear white are still present. The effect is just extremely wow worthy because we're seeing this breaking of the pigment. It's just one of them you can't really see until you turn on the black light. I haven't yet tried this using the dye mixed with citric acid powder, but I'm excited to give that a shot at some point. Now finally, it's time to dye a rainbow colorway. We are going to dye some yarn using the six fluorescent acid dye colors. And we know that all six of these colors, at least individually, glow under a black light. So what happens when we combine them? Will the black light blue be able to stand up to these other much more pigmented colors? I couldn't wait any longer to dye a fluorescent rainbow colorway. And so I put a single stranded sock blank from Wool to Dye For. This is Platinum Sock, 75% superwash merino wool, 25% nylon, in my catering steam pan with four cups of water and two tablespoons of white vinegar. Whenever I am dealing with dry dye powders, I'm always wearing my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Once things were nice, steamy, and hot, I brought over these neon acid dyes and started speckling them onto the yarn, knowing that they were gonna spread out because we have enough water here for the colors to spread, but honestly, that's what these colors like to do anyway, so that wouldn't really be a problem. Part of me wanted to use Vivid Violet because that does have the fluorescent pink in there. However, for this blank, I decided to start with fluorescent red at one end and use the hot fuchsia at the other, where maybe some of that fuchsia would mix with the black light blue, giving us some purples that lead into the pink. At least that was my thought going into this. I did wipe my fingertips on some 75-25 sock yarn that was just off camera as a yarn mop. Here is our rainbow. Originally, I considered sort of layering the fuchsia and the black light blue together a little bit more, but the reason why I didn't is I didn't know how much this blue might spread, and I know that hot fuchsia is a color that spreads a lot. And so I wanted to give it a little bit of time to see what the colors are gonna do and to see how much overlap we have there. But in the future, I would wanna bring the vivid violet in um, and bring some there. But I thought that we would just stick with the colors that are marketed as fluorescent. And without even waiting for things to be dry, <laughs> bringing over our black light. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Ooh, I can see. That's so cool, because I think there's little bits of uh, the blue colorless fluorescent acid dye that is on the pink, and so I can see those brighter speckles down there. Oh my gosh. Because ultimately, pink, even though like it's fluorescent, uh, is not necessarily as vibrant as some of these other colors. And we'll look at this in a dark room. Right now we have natural light, so we're looking at the difference between like natural light and the black light, but the brightness of the blue 
is more on par with the pink. Um, it's not as bright as say the yellow um, is, which is one of the brightest pigments. And so you see the brightest in like the green through orange, but this is cool. Now, I would say in person, I do feel some blue speckles in here, but mostly it is a little bit more subtle overall. But under the black light, the blue section doesn't really feel speckly. It feels very sort of even color coverage. Um, but that color did spread a fair amount. And I think we were able to get enough that's hopefully bright enough to like under natural light fit with the other colors. I am seeing those pink spreads, so we'll see if we get some more purples. But oh, this is so cool. But anyway, I did add a little more acid earlier, but I'm gonna add even more now, because that pink sometimes just needs it. The other colors seem to be doing okay as they are. Oh, this is so pretty. We also have a lovely yarn mop that had a little bit of all the colors from my fingertips. <laughs> it is so bright. There's so much of the blue in there. Um, what's funny is like the pink there is so saturated that it doesn't feel like it glows as much, but you can see like around the edges that it glows more. And so, oh, this is so fun. But anyway, I'm gonna go steam set this for 30 minutes um, in a steamer basket. I turned off some more of the lights in here, so that way maybe we'll have a little bit more of a dramatic difference now. <laughs> As I pop on the black light, you can just really, really see it glow. Oh my gosh. Okay, and over here, maybe you can see what I was talking about, about some of that colorless fluorescent acid dye. Where I'm not seeing blue speckles down there, but we're seeing little bright speckles, which is really fun. And then the blue is just like glowy. <laughs> you don't really see the speckles in the way that you do with the green over here. After we're done heating this for 30 minutes, I'm gonna turn off the heat, but leave the sock link in the dye bath to cool off completely. And then I'll go ahead and wash it off camera. Here is our rainbow blank under white light. Uh, but now we're gonna turn off the overhead light. There is still some ambient light in here, but we're gonna turn on the black light. And we've got a full glowing rainbow. I wanna zoom in on black light blue because it glows. It's less bright than some of those yellows that are in the green next to it. And it's a different kind of glow than what we see with the hot fuchsia but the blue absolutely, absolutely glows. For a little more comparison, I've brought over just an undyed sock blank next to it, so you can see how the sock blank under the black light just looks kind of neutral, and you can see that fluorescence, that glow of the black light blue and the other neighboring colors. There is a trade-off to black light blue because if you want it to feel more vibrant, more neon, you're gonna need to use a lot more of it compared to the other fluorescent colors. And so you can add some true turquoise to get more neon blue in there, but then it will reduce the amount of fluorescence that you can see because the non-fluorescent blues will absorb more of the light and so you'll see less of the emission. At least I think that that's how it works. Because <laughs> again, ultimately the fluorescent blue that we're seeing here is about the ratio of the blue acid dye with the colorless fluorescent acid dye pigment. Unfortunately, while you can add blue pigments and maybe reduce the fluorescence a little bit, but it'll still uh, fluoresce, if you try to add red or pink pigments to black light blue, you're gonna kill the fluorescence. So the way that light interacts with those red and pink molecules and this colorless fluorescent acid dye pigment will just result in not seeing the fluorescence. This is something I will uh, try to demonstrate, I think at a later date, but it's unfortunate because I know that I, the first thing I wanted to do was like, ooh, let's make a purple. And so we'll try, we'll see how it goes. But I want to temper our expectations there. 
I am still amazed that I now have a neon rainbow that I can turn on the black light and it will glow. This is something I've been dreaming of ever since I started playing around with the black lights more and then we would see just that dark patch wherever the blues were in any fluorescent rainbow sets. So I am unbelievably excited to play with the six fluorescent rainbow colors so much more. But not just that, I'm excited to play with all of the new Jacquard Acid Dye colors. There are so many different combinations here that are just unbelievably stunning. And this is without me pulling in the other 40 Jacquard acid dye colors. Where can you get these new colors? They are currently listed on Dharma Training Company's website, so you can go and order them. And they also will soon be available in Jacquard Products bulk and specialty supply store through their website. Eventually, all of these colors will be available through brick and mortar stores that do sell Jacquard acid dyes and some other online retailers as well. Jacquard Products, thank you so much for sponsoring today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly and for providing me with these dyes to play with. Uh, I've really enjoyed this entire experience and I am so thankful to finally have a fluorescent blue acid dye. You know you're going to be seeing a lot more of this color coming up. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I post yarn dyeing videos at least twice a week, and you don't want to miss any of it. Thank you so much for watching.